My father was born in Stanger, a small town 78 kilometers up the north coast from Durban, South Africa, on the 8th of March 1918. When he was 14 years old, his father asked him what he intended to do for the rest of his life, and he replied he wanted to go to sea. He enrolled at the general both in Simonstown to begin his sea career. He excelled at the general Botha. He was part of the crew that took part in the cutter race on the Thames. He came first in sportsmanship and came second in the King's Gold Medal. The medal awarded to the boy who shows qualities likely to make him the finest sailor and chief officer. The medal is granted to three boys each year. After graduating from the General Botha, he joined the Merchant Navy, and in 1936 he joined the Clan Line. His voyages, amongst other places, were the Indian coast, South and East Africa. He joined a ship named Gogovale on the 2nd of January in 1940. On the 4th of August 1940, the Gogovale was sunk by a German submarine. to read the letter my dad sent to his parents on the 10th of August in 1940. We came over in a convoy of 54 ships and on the morning of Sunday, August the 4th, at 1.25 a.m. we were torpedoed. We were hit just forward of my room. My room was completely wrecked, although I was unhurt. I couldn't find my life jacket in the shambles, so I had to get out. My deck in the room was about four inches under water and the ship had a terrific list. I scrambled along to my boat and it had been washed away. The boat above my room had been blown up and the starboard boat managed to get away with about 24 in it. The captain, chief officer, myself, junior wireless operator, second and fourth engineers, three sailors and three firemen were left on board. We had no light and it was pitch black, so we sat down to wait for dawn. Meanwhile we managed to get the emergency wireless dynamo working sent out our SOS, which was picked up by Northern Island Station 500 miles away. So we thought our chances of being picked up very slim. When dawn broke at about 5 a.m. we saw that another ship had been caught as well. The ship, ours, was slowly getting a bigger list. So the old man said abandon ship but we refused. So after a bit we compromised. Six lads went off to a 30-foot gangway. The captain and chief officer stood by a small raft on the bridge. The two engineers and WTO and I went forward to the raft lashed to the rigging. The bollock was underwater, so we had to wade through the rigging and climb up and sit on the raft. It was bitterly cold and I had pyjamas and a raincoat on, and the others were dressed about the same. I don't know how long we sat up there, but the fourth engineer was just about falling off with cold, and we weren't much better. And then as we rose to the crest of the wave, I saw a wee ship on the horizon, and I sung out, Destroyer! And then I thought maybe it's the sub come up for another smack. But no, it was the Destroyer. It came belting up about 30 knots. They then picked up our lads, who had got away in the boat, and also the other ship's crew, and then came for us. Meantime, we risked going to our various cabins. I got my trousers and uniform jacket. The boat came in as near as they could, and we had to jump for it. So we were all dragged aboard like drowned rats. As soon as we got aboard, the Navy lads dished us up with old clothes and rum, and boy oh boy, is that rum tough stuff. I felt like taking on the hunt single-handed. The destroyer picked up our SOS at about 2 a.m. but couldn't answer because they would then give away their position to any submarine, so they couldn't relieve our feelings any. If they could only have let us know, we wouldn't have lost so much hair, but it was too dangerous. <laughs> 